what's up everyone welcome to another episode of everything entrepreneurial in this episode i'm speaking with gene evans gene is an expert on all things networking it is our passion and one that is born out of experience and plenty of trial and error mistakes and mishaps through our blogs and social media channels gene shares tips tricks hacks and ideas on how to become an effective networker in business okay let's get straight into the episode how are you gene you all right nice yeah, to finally meet you nice. Yeah, you too. You too. Brilliant stuff. Now, I just want to say uh, first and foremost, thanks very much for taking the time to uh, no worries, have a chat with me good. today. I'm extremely interested in hearing all about you and what you do, uh, all this networking buzz. I'm really interested in it. So, um, <laughs> if you want to kick off, if you want to kick off the podcast by telling people who you are and what you do. Perfect. Um, so my name is uh, Jean Evans, and I recently set up a business called Networking Me. And I suppose where that came from, I, I started a blog last May and I was really just writing about it um, in terms of perspectives on networking, what I was seeing, what I was watching, how people were struggling. And I set up the blog networkinggene.ie to address some of this. And then the more I sort of evolved, I was watching people where they were networking and then they were going, where, where else could they network? And they didn't know why to go to certain networks, how to choose a network, you know, how to qualify and quantify why they were going to certain ones. And I started writing about them. So I went about sourcing different networks and I was interviewing different people and I would give the lowdown because I suppose there's, there's lots of different types of networks, whether they're professional, business, social, whether they are referral networks. So different people need different networks for different reasons. And sometimes it's an amalgam and a, and a collective of them. Because what I learned is, you know, I suppose a couple of years ago, I was a part of about nine different networks, but I was getting something different out of all of them. And people would say, well, how, how could you do that? And I go, well, I get something different out of all of them. They're all part of different, um, they're, they're all part of, you know, they're, they're happening at different times of the month and what have yeah. you. And uh, some of them will be weekly, some of them will be monthly. And I got so much value out of them. So before I, but I, I was 22 years in a corporate career and I was very well networked in it. And I did networking before I knew I was networking. I didn't know it was a thing. Right. But in terms of promotions, in terms of when you're in a business environment and you're employed, if you want to get promoted, you want to get access to new opportunities and projects and what have you, you have to yeah. be visible. And the way to be visible is networking. And there's a skill within that. And that's what I would call the internal networking and your stakeholder networking and management. And um, I'm just going to tell my kids to hold on one thing. That's no worries whatsoever. That's the, no worries the, whatsoever. <laughs> this the, is the wonders uh, of, um, of being home. And there's a... There's listen, here's the thing, though. This is, this is a podcast, Everything Entrepreneurial, and this is real life. You know that way, so... Oh, I tell you. But sometimes it's a little bit too real, I can tell you. Um, I, I, don't know, I don't know whether you're familiar with um, with, with the X-Men series. And uh, there's one of the characters, Jean Grey, who's also the Phoenix. And the other way, she's the almighty, all-powerful, whatever. And she literally raises up, whatever. Yeah, I have a few of those moments every so often in my house. Like, and it's just like, going, oh, my God, it's crazy. And then trying to work. And, um, yeah, and then the, the constant feeding, the constant entertainment, the constant... I understand. Yeah. I think this would be extremely valuable for other people to hear how you actually do manage working from home and homeschooling with your children and dealing with that. That's that's an important, well, that's a, that's a crucial skill that I'd say a lot of business owners, maybe women in particular, would find like difficult at this moment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. I think I saw a sort of a meme there recently and people's expectations of themselves last March when we went into the first lockdown and we're going to be the perfect parents and we're going to have loads of arts and crafts with our children and we're going to go and do this and we're going to be with them the whole time. Personally, I'm not particularly crafty. So I'm just looking at that going, right, that's my worst nightmare. So that's not going to be it. Um, my other half is quite good at playing board games with him. So he's quite flexible in his work. So he'll go and do the board games and stuff like that. And we go for walks and what have you. Um, at the start, I was I was also potty training my youngest as well. So that was fun trying to do all of that. 
because I was doing a lot of chairing of groups and facilitation and what have you. And then she'd drive out going, Mommy, I need to go to the toilet. And I'd be on the 20 people on the call and going, did everybody hear that? I just want to be clear, you all know that she needs to go to the bathroom. So there was just so many moments. But I think this time around, I find that I, I personally, my sense is with network, networking is a really good litmus test for where things are at and where people are at in terms of mindset. I think people are struggling a lot more this time because COVID is closer to home. I think there's an there's COVID fatigue is absolutely real, Zoom fatigue. I think the difficulty of being at home again, homeschooling. Um, I'm not a teacher, I was not made to be a teacher and I'm also not made to be a stay at home mom. Love my kids to bits, but I wanna be able to go out and work and come back and then be with them and yeah. spend the, time with, the weekend with them. But I, I'm not made to be a stay at home mom. So I find that personally difficult and it is challenging. So with the homeschooling, yeah, there's there. My kids go to a Gwell school. So it's sort of like from the Irish into the English and the maths and then they do their maths differently. So it's just so many more layers. So I think what I've realized for me is I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm not trying to do everything. I make sure they get their stuff done. They get as much as they can done. And after that, then it's making sure that they're happy yeah. and that we get out and get fresh air. That's the, one of the, the benefits is we're getting out to do a lot more walking and we're going out walking together and they got their little Fitbits and we're a little competitive and getting our steps and stuff like that. So it's more of a focus on making sure they're connected. Um, I think the kids are struggling more, like they're quite resilient, but they're struggling more than people realize because I, I had arranged for one of my daughters to see uh, one of her friends to go for a walk on the seafront, so socially distant and responsible. But then I did something stupid with the car and put the wrong petrol in. So then I had to get that siphoned, which meant I had to do that. I was hungry. I don't do hunger very at the, at the best of times. And I was hungry and I was tired. So then I was hungry, tired, grumpy and poor by, by the end of that. <laughs> and it wasn't great, but it meant that she m missed going out to see her friend. And oh, my God, she was so angry so disappointed and the tears and she just goes, I really wanted to see her. And I just I didn't realize I don't think she realized how much she needed to see people as well. Yeah. We all do. And we're all struggling with that. So it is hard. And I think for, for the, there's one of the things I just came off a one to one there and a couple of the points. I think there's a lot of rhetoric out there about people saying that we need to be kind, that we need to support each other. But people are saying that until they realize somebody hasn't phoned them back, that somebody hasn't answered an email back. And then they're going, oh, my God, people didn't answer me. They didn't get back to me. And I'm going be kind, give yeah. a gentle nudge, remind them, pick up the phone saying, is everything okay? Can I help? Or do you need to extend the deadline? But don't assume that you know what's going on in people's lives because you don't. 100%, yeah. this, this, everything that's going on now is not normal. And I know that for me, I can't work in my normal way. So I would do an awful lot of writing, but to be writing, I need to be alone and in silence. And when I've got interruptions every 30 seconds it's not conducive to getting very much done so I get what I can done done yeah but I've had to recalibrate my my work cycle in terms of my expectations of what I'm going to deliver and also reevaluate how I you know I was getting very very stressed about not meeting my own deadlines and things I wanted to achieve and new projects yeah. and but I I'm the one setting the deadline so I can also reset the deadlines and I yeah. have to give myself you know, just be raising awareness and giving myself permission to reset them and say, okay, I'm just not going to be able to do all this. Yeah. It is going to be slower and it just is what it is, but it's more important that our family is happy and safe and that we're getting our exercise and our fresh air and that we are happy and smiling. I said, that's actually more important because that's what we're all going to remember out of this. But in yeah. terms of business owners, um, you know, I, I would do, obviously I do an awful lot of networking, but I think one of the biggest things that people can genuinely do is pick up the phone to somebody they haven't talked to in a while and say hello or connect on LinkedIn or send them a little WhatsApp message. And one thing I would also say is it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your title is. You're a human being that needs to connect with other human beings. And if you have got a big CEO role or a big company, more and more, people have an expectation that you're super resilient and you're a superman or superwoman. Whereas you're actually another human being who 
who has his or her own struggles to deal with and even more pressure of dealing with teams or management and stuff like that. But who's looking after you? So it's to say to people, don't look at titles, don't look at any of that. Be a nice human being and be authentic and reach out and help other people and do not assume that you know what people are going through because somebody could be sick today or to find today and sick tomorrow and you just don't know. Yeah, you that's really that's really super great advice uh, about reaching out to people and everything like that. I, f- I feel what you were saying about trying to be the perfect parent uh, a couple of minutes ago kind of relates to people wanting to be the perfect networker too. Um, would you be able to talk to me about that? Like, is it is it people that are uh, maybe they have a bit of self doubt or they're they're just not confident when they go to networking events or actually even networking online? Like, what why do people think that they need to be this perfect person going into an event, a networking event, and how can they how can they stop thinking like that and kind of just be more authentic, like you say? So the first thing that I would frame it as um networking is a skill so we're on a zoom call today doing this podcast and you set up your technical side of things and you're going to edit the podcast and you're going to push it online and it's going to air so they're technical skills that you learned but a few years ago you probably didn't have those skills but you went out and learned them and now you do it and you go forward networking is exactly the same thing and it's something that is not taught that people don't realize it's a skill but it's a soft skill so it's not a technical skill it's a soft skill so what i what i was saying at the start is i was 22 years in a corporate world where i did a lot of networking but when i was made redundant what i realized i went out and i was going okay i started working with their half and I was going i don't know other business people so i started networking and to your question around confidence in my previous life and a career, I worked, I had a large department, I had a large team, I traveled the world, I was pitching, I was presenting. And people thought, right, well, if you can get up in an auditorium and present to a thousand people or two thousand people, you must be uber confident. And I'd say that's, you know, you can be confident about delivery and but you've got a script, you're prepared, you are, it's about how you deliver a message. But when you go into networking, one of my realizations was, to come back to answer your question, was when you stand up at a meeting or virtually sitting and you're introducing and all eyes are on you, it is an extremely vulnerable position. But what I realized and what I learned through doing it is that when I looked back after doing it more and more and more and get used to doing it, my confidence grew and I was way more confident, me, myself and I going out networking than I was when I ran a big department and was traveling and doing all of that because I had to learn to articulate my voice. So a part of the thing about networking is about future proofing yourself. And I would say this to anybody who thinks that they don't need to future proof yourself. You do because you don't know what life is going to throw at you. And part of networking is future-proofing yourself that you have built up a a portfolio of contacts and you've built up those relationships and you've nurtured them and you've spent time with people getting to know them and how you can give to them and how you can help. But networking also gives you an opportunity to get used to the sound of your own voice. It gets used to you having to fine tune and hone how you introduce yourself. And people get scared about pitching and I I have a lot of thoughts on that you know one of the things I would say for all networking events you have to be prepared you have to know what the expectation of you is before you go in unless you're used to networking and you can manage this on the fly but if you're new to networking and this is part of what my blog does that I, I look at all of the networks and I break down what it is how you connect what is going to be expected of you costs all of that side of things so people know how to start preparing and they're getting themselves psyched up but sometimes you're going to have to do a 50 second 15 second introduction of yourself sometimes it might be 30 sometimes it might be 60 but the point is people sort of say oh i do not want to go into something and pitch look at it as you have an opportunity to introduce yourself And if you can't introduce yourself in 15 seconds or 30 seconds or 60 seconds, whatever is required, then you need to step back. Because if you can't introduce you and your business, you don't have a business because it's a skill you have to get. You have got to be able to voice who you are, what your why is, what problem you solve for a customer, because you're going to have to do it to a bank manager. You might have to do it for investors. If you're looking to scale, you're going to have to do it 
for interviewing people because you want to hire people into your team, you're always going to have to spend time introducing yourself, but it is a skill. You can do workshops on it. And there's, there's a few people out there that do workshops just to hone this about how you introduce yourself, but it's your name, it's your company, it's the, the pain points that you solve for customers yeah. and getting that across to people. But what, what I also found was that when I stepped out of the corporate role and into just sort of a general business environment was what I realized when you're in a corporate, they're telling you what the business is about, what the strategy is about. You've got, you've got their jargon, you've got their thought process, you've got what that company is about, their values and beliefs, and you're just perpetuating this. But when you're on your own and working out and you're going in a network, you might be talking about a business, but it's still who are you? And what does your voice sound like? And what are your values? And what is your ethos? And what do you represent? And you have to find your voice. So this is why, why for me, it ties into confidence because it makes you self-reflect. It makes you raise your awareness. And yeah. once you do that, you know who you fit in with and how to find your tribe and how to evaluate what is going to be successful. And this all starts growing your confidence. And so for me, it was fundamental that when you grow your confidence, you grow personally. If you're going personally, you can grow professionally, but you can't grow professionally. It'd be a promotion, collaboration, about new business, about ex you know expanding your business. You cannot grow if you're not growing personally. And you can't grow personally unless you're working on your confidence, your sense of self-belief. Self and this was partly why I started working on the business around networking is it is such a fundamental skill and it's not taught, it's not talked about as a skill, but there's a science and an art and a nuance to it. And it is a soft skill. And it's like everything in, in, in unless a, if, a, if a business is about podcasting or a business is about bookkeeping or accounting or tax or um, social media, or website, whatever, that's the core business. But that business owner then, right, I'm a specialist in web design, but I'm going to outsource legal and accounting and payroll and all the different aspects. Yeah. Or my business is accounting, I'm going to outsource web and social media and SEO and all the other aspects of it. But what you can't outsource is learning how to build relationships with other people effectively, strategically, authentically. That is something you have to learn, and which means you have to learn about yourself. You need to learn mm -hmm. about who you are. And I think once you do that, you then start being more capable of putting you and your voice and what you represent out into the universe. And it's very, very powerful. And I would say there's, there's an awful lot of people, I, I do a bit of reading on this, there's a lot of people, 45 to 50% of the world are introverts. And this is not known. It's not considered. And what I would love to say to people, if they're a managing director, look at your team and do the maths. Now, how are you engaging with those people and how are they engaging? Are you giving them the skills and teaching them how to engage? What I would say to anybody going out networking is know whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, because knowing that starts giving you more confidence. If you're an extrovert, you will have a style of networking. And if, if you're an introvert, you probably don't think you can network. And what I would like to say to people is if you're an introvert, it is your superpower. So when you go networking, be it virtually or when we do get back to face to face, put an imaginary cape on and walk into the room and realize being an introvert is your superpower because you have a phenomenal ability to listen, to connect with people, to build relationships, to um, watch and take things in, but also the, the, the essence of an introvert is that they can talk to people. People are thinking, oh, they can't talk to people. They absolutely can. I'm an introvert. I can talk to people. I can talk for Ireland. That's not a, pro not a problem. <laughs> what I can't do is go in and talk in large groups where the focus is on me. Or if I do talk to people, then I need to go away and be on my own and recharge. Yeah. And it's about energy and it's about flow. And I've learned a lot about myself. And I think you do need to grow your confidence. It doesn't come overnight, but that's where the practice happens. And it's like introducing yourself. You do it again and again and again, and then you don't think about it. You just yeah. do it. And getting your elevator pitch or introducing yourself, you do it the first time you mess it up. You realize somebody's got the glaze look and they haven't understood what you're doing. And you go, I'm going to need to do a little bit more work on that next time or fine tune that, or I'm going to do a little workshop on how to introduce my business because I need to develop that as a skill within networking. And but it, for, for me, it's it's so fundamental 
everything, every piece of business success will stem from people's ability to learn how to network, which is why I set up around sort of the speaking and training about it, because I, it's, it's the one thing you can't outsource. But yet, if you learn it and you manage your expectations and you learn how to set goals and you learn how to do it strategically and effectively, it'll change your world. It won't do it overnight, mm. but you'll only see it with hindsight. I, I completely, a million percent agree with you. Uh, the reason that I'm doing these podcasts and everything like that is to actually start networking and learning how to build a network, uh, be around people. I would have been quite shy. And um, when I first started my business and even like in the last year, I ended up working in my business rather than on my business. I was too busy doing the day to day. I had my head down, just trying to keep things going that I never really had. I never gave myself the actual opportunity to network. So doing all these podcasts and learning how to do this and engaging with people like yourself is going to help me build my confidence in myself and I'll get to streamline and me pitches and everything like that. But it will also bring a lot of opportunity. You know, that way if I present myself in an authentic way and people might like that, they might be like, geez, I'll give Curtis a ring. He does websites and social media and everything like that. You know, I, I fully believe that my business will have exponential growth if I keep this trajectory up I, I completely believe it I'm 100% behind it so I believe in everything that you're saying that's why I was really interested to get into talk to you about networking and everything like that it's such a let me give let me give a, a, a tip on the shy thing and and why I say this I um I'm a shy introvert and I was... can you be a shy extrovert <laughs> yes you can be a shy extrovert. <laughs> Yeah. So there, there's all these different parameters and this is one of the things it's it's so interesting from a, a psychology point of view and a people point of view I love networking because I love meeting new people I love seeing what makes them tick I'm curious I want to know because the more I know and I start vibing with people um, I mightn't be able to help them today but I might be able to help them tomorrow but if I don't know anything about them I'm never going to know when I've come across an opportunity and yeah. you know I to give a personal example I had built a relationship with somebody who I was able to help um, uh, for between bits and pieces over the last few years. But one of the essences of networking is give without the expectation of return. Just give to people. If you have an ability to help somebody and you like the person and you think they're going to be a good representation of you, then help and be that person who gives um, and support. And you never know when it'll come back around. And three years later, I, you know, last week I got a call. She goes, listen, I've been waiting for something to happen i have this opportunity in april and october and i'd like you to come on and do some training with me would you be interested and it's for a big big company and i said 100 percent. and i didn't know she was thinking that's about brilliant me. you know but, I, but that's the point is you never know when some something is going to come back but you just have to be putting out goodness into, into yeah. the universe but going, going back to the shy thing people I would share groups and, you know, to, to any of your listeners and, and to you, Curtis, you know, if you want to come to networking groups, you know, ones that I'm involved in or you want introductions to ones, I'm very happy to do that. Like all of the details are on my blog, networkinggene.ie, and every week I try and profile a new network. So it's getting people connecting with different places they wouldn't have ne necessarily known or heard of. And that's obviously one uh, uh, benefit we can derive from COVID is the fact that everything is online. But the shyness thing is... People tend to take the label shy or introvert, and that's the label they stick with. And it becomes an excuse and it comes into, I can't do this because I'm shy and I can't do this because I'm an introvert or I can't do this because I'm a shy introvert. Not true, not true, not true, not true. So let's dispel that first of all. Life is a journey for every single one of us. And the point is you don't know what somebody's journey is. So I yeah. can get up in front of a meeting and I can facilitate, I can connect people to beat the band. I'm a connector. There's different types of networks, but I'm a connector. So, and I love that. And people say, you couldn't possibly be shy because you're up there talking. And I went, that is a skill I have learned. It is something I have practiced. It is something I have learned about myself and learned how to manage myself. It does not make me not shy or not an introvert, but people see me in the room when I have switched on and I say, like, what you didn't see is how I got there and my struggle to get there yeah. and the struggle is real. And that's what people don't see. And they won't see what happens afterwards when I literally have to go and be on my own to, you know, so before, for example, I would have done meetings and then I'd be in the car on the M50 and it was time to recalibrate and recharge and listen to music or be on my own or just be in my own thoughts or 
white blog, my head, whatever it was. But when we went online, I was doing back to back calls and I got I was getting absolutely close to burnout last year because I didn't realize I wasn't leaving enough time to recharge in between. But back to the shyness thing, shyness can be managed. And I say this because I was pathologically shy. Shyness can be managed, but it won't be managed unless you start trying to manage it. So you can choose not to, or you can choose to do something about it. And if you put a step forward, And then you put the next step forward. Don't try and take on the world and don't try and think you're going to resolve all of these emotional issues overnight or not, but you won't ever get anywhere if you don't start. So put one step in front of the other. Get somebody who knows how to do it, who can be a buddy, who can show you the reins, who can talk to you, who can say, this is what to expect or here's how I would approach it. Or somebody who just knows that you're going to struggle, that you're a little bit shy and you just want a bit of moral support share that and let somebody else help you and mentor you along that journey if you are feeling if you're an introvert and if you are shy as well this is a tip it does not matter whether you're online or in a face-to-face environment what i would say is always arrive early a lot of people think right i'm going to let everybody arrive and i'm going to sneak into the room (laughs) at the end nobody will see me i'm going to run over to the coffee station i'm going to grab a cup of coffee and i'm going to not talk to anybody i'm going that defeats the purpose of you going into a room to meet people to make sure that you defeat the purpose and it's like subterfuge and you make sure you don't meet anybody and going that is not what it's about so arrive early is tip number one smile because your body language relaxes your shoulders relax when you smile and make sure your eyes are smiling that it's it's you're doing both and you put out an aura of approachability. If you're in a face-to-face environment and you might go over and get a cup of coffee, face the door and watch people coming in because if you're smiling, you don't know whether they're feeling the same way as you. Yeah. So be a host, okay? Be a host. You mightn't be the host, but think of yourself as the host. And when somebody comes over, smile and say, hi, my name is, my name is Jean. And when you welcome people in and you're that approachable person, you're putting the focus on the other person and taking it off yourself. And if you can continue to do that, it makes it a lot more manageable. So when yeah. people go feeling that overwhelmed and their palms start getting sweaty, go in early, find your environment, get the lay of the land in terms of the door. It's setting you up for success and you can manage what happens then rather than you having to manage a situation that's foisted upon you. And it's the same thing online as well. Arrive early because if you're there with one or two people, you can start having a little bit of a chat and a bit of chit chat and a bit of banter and stuff like that. It'll start to relax you. So then as other people come in and you might be new or visiting a group, um, Tom might say, hey, this is Curtis. He's new to the group. Me, Stan, who's one of our regular members. And suddenly it starts happening and opening up and it'll yeah. put you at ease. But if you come in last online or in a face-to-face environment, it's foisted upon you. And I find people go into that going, I didn't meet anybody and they run away early because nothing is happening because they can't let it happen to them. They've literally put a barrier up. So it's trying to learn little things that can that can help. Yeah. And make it manageable. And bit by bit, every time you go, is try and improve on something. But also when you go to a networking event, whether it's online, whether it's offline, do not think you have to meet everybody immediately. Try and meet, you know, the first time, meet one person and have a good conversation or two people or three people, but make it small and manageable and then work out your Sorry, problem. I don't know how to help with that. <laughs> good old technology. <laughs> she, she, she comes in at the, the, the oddest of times. Um, but, you know, the point is that, you know, if you set up your, your goals and that it's manageable, that you don't have to go in and work the room. That's a, that's a misnomer. People think networking means I have to go and schmooze and I have to go and work the room. And I'm going, it's not. It's not for an extrovert. It's not for the only time you're ever going to work rooms if you're a politician or you're looking to get yes. funding where it's literally it's press the flesh and make sure yeah. you get around. It's more about depth, isn't it? You want to spend time with the person and actually get to know them and build something of value, a relationship that has value rather than being like, oh, what's your name? Oh, what's your name? Oh, what's your name? It's, it's all about the depth, yeah. It's two or three people. You're, you're looking to get to know them. And a big thing that people do is they make the mistake of thinking, they look at the title, look at what somebody does and say, I don't need you, therefore you're not the person I need to talk to. 
huge mistake. Never look at, look at the title and go, that's fantastic. How did you get there? What did you do? And you start being inquisitive and interested in the person. But that doesn't define them. Your job when you're networking is to discover people, what's their journey, what made them tick, why are they where they're at? And that's where one-to-ones come into play. So for me, networking has to be consistent. If you're not being consistent and showing up, then people won't know you. If they don't know you, they can't refer you, they can't help you. They won't know how to help you if they're not getting to know you. So there's a cycle and there's a process to all of this, but also a lot of people tend to think that if I go to one or two events and I get a couple of business cards or I meet a couple of people, right, I've done my duty, tick box, tick box. I'm going, no, well, that's just the very, very start of it. You need to have a follow-up strategy. You need to know when you're going to meet them again. You need to know how you're going to nurture that relationship. So there's only yeah. a process to it. But for me, I, I suppose I've been doing it for 25 years and it's 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 in my DNA. And I sometimes you don't know what you do know because you just do. It's just natural. It's like getting up yeah. and breathing and walking for most of us. But so for me, it's incredibly natural but I also know when I'm going to struggle or when I need to watch my energy and why I set up my business is I fundamentally believe that it's such a powerful skill it will do amazing things for people's confidence and everybody can can do it Um, the people who are also for for introverts and shy people they tend to be creative right so the creativity comes when they're alone and on their own and working on their own things in, in their own head. So the people that change the world, you know, the, 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 the Bill Gates, the Warren Buffett, the Darwin, Einstein, all introverts. So they go and talk to people, get an idea, mull on it, and then come up with something that revolutionized or changed the world. Yeah. People, you know, to give, a, give an example sometimes as well, people don't realize, but Beyonce is an introvert. So people see her on right. stage, She's, you know, super, you know, super entertainer or whatever. But her, her stage presence, it, she calls it slash of fierce, and that's what she channels. But her creativity right. and how she does what she does and her the content comes from when she's on her own. I mean, you, you know very little about her outside of what you see on the stage, but the two different personas. So different people have different ways of managing it. But the point is we people who are creative, they tend to be the people who take an idea, mull on it, and go away, you know, and I don't know, like, have you ever been in a situation where something has happened to you and somebody said something to you? This certainly happens to me anyway. And I might come up with a fantastically witty response about three days later because I've been mulling out and I've been sort of going to the supermarket or having a shower or whatever. And I'm going, that's what I need to say. I'm three days later because I've been mulling on something, but um, not necessarily in the moment with that, you know, quick, quick quick banter and responses because I need to take things and digest them and yeah. roll on them you know and that that's just part of being an introvert but the point is that's brilliant because introverts bring a depth and substance to the table and because they're not just willy-nilly they're not just off the cuff comments and stuff like that they're reflected upon and if you start looking at that and recalibrating and reframing that going that is excellent for business it is excellent for confidence it's excellent for scaling for doing for constructing but if people don't realize if introverts don't realize they can bring all of this to the table that it's so powerful but they need to learn how to challenge it but they also need to own it and be proud of it so back down to why i say that introverts need to put on a little imaginary cape and go into the room and have it on going this is my superpower be proud own it i'm introvert and it is brilliant, but they need to learn what that looks like and what it looks like to them and how it feels and then how they're going to interact with other people, mind their energy. And then the rest of the networking thing is learning the skills and the science behind it. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And I'd, I'd imagine there's a lot, obviously I don't know the percentages, but there's a lot of business owners who would be introverts too. Um, so you help you help business owners uh, with networking. Is that correct? Or do you, is it just kind of just a whole blanket kind of just networking in general? So at the moment, because it's a new business, what I have been doing a lot of is uh, speaking and I chair groups and do facilitation for some networks as well. 
And so okay. what I'm I'm going to be doing some training for one of the Leos, um, and that will sort of be focused at, on startups, um, because obviously startups don't necessarily have the money, but it's a critical skill for them to learn in order yeah. to not burn. So I'm hoping that if they can learn the skill, because all startups, you don't know what you don't know. So what you need to do is get out and meet more people. But if you don't know that's a thing or you don't know how to do it, you're not going to do it because you yeah. are going to focus on doing your day-to-day -day business rather than working on your business. Yeah. So I'm going to be talking to some of the, the, the Leo. So that will focus on startups. And then I'm going to be developing courses around um, people who have done some networking, but need to... You know, you could be 55 starting to network because you've never had to do it for your business. Yeah. You could be somebody who's employed and your boss has told you to go out and network, but the boss doesn't know how to network and you don't know how to network. So you're not going to know how to manage expectations, be strategic, set goals, but also understand that it takes time. It could be that um, you're a very, very senior director and you're not the person who's had to network. Um, so you're very senior, but you still don't have this, what I would see is a, you know, a life skill and a business yeah. skill. So I'm, I'm working with some people like that as well who just want to know how to do this better and a little bit more scientifically. And it's a bit like riding a bike. Once you know, every, see, everything in life is easy once you know how. It's difficult when you don't know how. That's the thing that people don't get. And so it's not something you, you can continue improving on it. But the whole point is raising your awareness of you, raising your awareness of other people, what to look out for, how to manage it. Um, but also to be very aware of the biases and unconscious biases out there. And sometimes it's about calling it and saying, reflect on this. Does this stand true for you or for somebody else? If you're a boss and you're trying to bring your team on and you see some people and they're not participating, for example, what I want to say to the, the big corporates as well, if you've got a lot of churn and burn in your staff, then you probably need to work on inclusion, diversity, team morale. And a big way to do that is to facilitate internal networking. But if your staff don't know how to network, then teach them this skill. Teach them how to connect with each other and why. And invest in that because if they can learn to connect, that's good for morale. It's good for diversity. It's good for inclusion. Yeah. It's good for reducing staff turnover. So therefore, it's going to be a net benefit in terms of cost management and um, just for the HR as a user group, for example, that will really help them. But then if you're an ambitious professional and you're used to sitting behind a computer or an Excel sheet or whatever and manipulating pivot charts and doing all sorts of different things, if you are very good at that, but you know you've got more to give a company, you need to be able to put your head above the power pit and learn how to talk to people and engage with them. And your technical skill is great, but if you don't know how to communicate and talk to other people, it doesn't matter. So there's a big thing in networking and it's visibility plus credibility equals profitability. So visibility is, are you visible? Do people know you? Question number one, you've got to audit your network. Do people know you? If they don't, you've got to go about doing something about it in a company or externally. I would argue both because there's stakeholder management, there's supplier management, there's lots of different ways where you can connect with people. The credibility is, are you consistent? Do you say what do you mean? Are you able to articulate who you are? Do you do what you say you're going to do? So if you're going to connect somebody, if you're going to help somebody, did you do? That's your credibility. Credibility yeah. is the consistency bit. Do you keep turning up? Or are you a fly by night where you go to one or two events and think something's going to happen and uh, you should you just expect business? So consistency is where you turn up and you engage and you do your follow up and you're nurturing and you follow a process. Profitability for me, for most business owners, they would think about the bottom line. They would think about revenue. They would think about their turnover. And I said profitability may be financial, but profitability can be growing your confidence. Profitability can be better relationships. Profitability can be defined in lots of different ways, soft ways outside of a monetary value. So it may be a both, but profitability yeah. is a much, much bigger umbrella term for me. So the visibility plus credibility equals profitability. And if people can reframe and recalibrate what that looks like and be more patient about the process, but invest in it, it's like yeah. anything, you only get out of it what you put into it. So if you're not willing to put into it, why would you expect to get out of it? Brilliant. Yeah. So if anyone was looking to get introduced to networking, wanting to find out a little bit more, I had a flick through your blog and a couple of the blog posts, fantastic, really in-depth, but easy to digest all about networking. Um, do you have an email list that people might be able to subscribe to your content? Is it best to find you at your website? Are you on any social media channels? Would you be able to tell us 
where yeah. you are. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm on I'm on Pinterest, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So I put so it's generally at networking gene or networking genie, depending on what URL I was able to get and what handle I was able to get. But I have a link tree. So for example, if you go onto Instagram, there's a link tree link and it's forward slash networking gene. And um, so all of the links are there, including the sign up for the newsletter. So it's networkinggene.com. Sorry, it's networkinggene.ie forward slash newsletter. And you can sign up to the newsletter that way. So I'm just getting that up and running. And the idea is that I'm going to put out a little piece of um, helpful sort of educational content, sort of more informative and a profile on a different um, network. And I'm just working on that at the moment and working on that content. And the content itself, it, it genuinely, it comes from my observations because I see people struggling. I know the struggles I went through. So I sort of started reflecting on this and writing about it from my perspective, what worked, what didn't work, when I was making mistakes, how people could do this better, quicker. You know, it's, it's all about doing it quicker, better, faster, cheaper. It's going to be cheaper because you're learning the skills quicker rather than investing in lots of different networks and not knowing how to get out of it or how to evaluate what is successful for goals um, and set goals. Um, so they, they, the blogs work on content that I observe because I also found a lot of people when we went online, they struggled with online, they still struggle with online. They, a lot of people said, I'm not going to go online. I don't want to learn this. I don't want to do it. I'll wait till we're going back face to face. And little did they know that 11 months later, we were still going yeah. to be in an online environment. So they've lost out on all of that visibility um, part and, you know, you're, you're only as visible as incredible as as you network so you have to get out there to be known and expose yourself and just get used to that um, and in terms of the networks like I do as I said I do all of the profiles of the different networks so people can see what the structure of them is and then I would know all of these people personally as well so if people want an invite they can come to it I chaired the City West uh, B2B in the South Dublin Chamber and oh brilliant to to come and to visit we're always looking for visitors and here's the thing as well all networks are always looking for visitors so all of the details are there so you can connect through i i put all of the profiles of their social media channels on the on the um blog profiles that i create and um, but i can make an introduction and likewise if people would like to follow me on my profiles what i do for for social media i put out different content on the different things so at the moment i'm doing a daily daily video tip um for networking so it's just one little small tip each day so this was a little video challenge i did for myself because i'm i wasn't particularly comfortable with video but i know video is the thing so i just said you know what nothing like a bit of a bit of competition a bit of a challenge so I said, there you go <laughs> and so i'm doing that or you know on instagram i put down book recommendations so i would read quite a lot so i put down a, a weekly book recommendation that i have enjoyed that i think is is, is helpful um, for people in business. And one of the things I, I find fascinating as well is people from different backgrounds read different types of books. And I love hearing what they're reading. So I tend to build a big list and I sort of, I sort of open um, I have a hit list of books that I get. And then every so often, once I get to about 10 or 15 books, then I'll, I'll press um, buy <laughs> and I get a big, big chunk of stuff in the post. But I love it because it's, it, it widens my perspective. It lateralizes the way I think about things. And it makes, you know, when you have all of this content as well, as people are struggling of, I don't know what to say, or I don't know how to start a conversation. One, yeah, there's loads of tips on that. But one of the things is read. If you're reading books and you're learning something new, it can be a conversation starter. I'm just reading this really good book, really recommend it, you know, because it might relate to an event you're going to or going, well, are you reading anything good at the moment? I'm just finishing my book. Have you got any recommendations? So it can be a really good conversation um, starter and really good content. But the more you do that, the more you enrich how you talk to people and yeah. why you're and how you make things relatable. Because that's the other thing about networking. A lot of people think it's all about small talk, the small talk, but Small talk is really important and we all do it. Um, you know, if you were to sit around with a, a group of friends and you opened a beer and you were chit chatting, yeah. it's not small talk. We all do it all of the time with a family. They call over and how's things, shooting the breeze, chillaxing. You're not having a deep, meaningful conversation. It's all small talk, but we tend to get very scared about doing small talk with people we don't know. But if you again reframe that, that 
small talk is the ability to find something that you have in common. So at the start, it might be you're at the same event. What brought you here? Have you been here before? And you start sort of basic things. Then it might be you mentioned you, where did you come from? Did you have long to travel? Um, where did you park your car or how you get back? Or, you know, you can have sort of small, that, this is the small talk, but it'll ramp up. And then you might mention something about the kids. Oh, tell me a little bit about your kids. Or I had to bring my dogs to the vet yesterday. Oh, I have a couple of dogs as well. What type do you have? it begets the conversation one thing begets yeah. the next thing so it's trying not to be scared about it it's trying to again make each other comfortable and start building up to find a common area that you can yeah talk about. and won't, won't you stumble upon that i suppose yeah. uh that's where you deepen the rapport and you strengthen the relationship and that's how you get the good depth in the in the networking events with people yeah 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 so it's, it's it's fascinating like i i when I'm when I was doing sort of a lot of the 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 live chairing and you know we do visitors days and I'd be meeting people and going wow I didn't know that was a job I didn't know it was a thing I didn't know you could make money out of it and I'm going that's amazing and um, I just come away buzzed by meeting all of these people going wow and I, I love with business owners and entrepreneurs like that another reason for me around the the the, the passion purpose of me talking about networking is entrepreneurs have started a business because they're very interested in something or they have a passion about something or they just feel they want to do it for themselves don't want to be working for somebody else but it takes a lot of courage and takes a lot of perseverance and it takes a lot of tenacity to do that and it takes a certain mindset and somebody with what I would hope is an open mindset because that's very important but what you find is a lot of people and I find this particularly with women and it's something that I'm, I'm working on through uh, some of my other networks is um i think with, with, the, with the confidence is that they'll have the confidence to set up the business but then they don't have the confidence to talk about it and tell people about it and i'm just going no if you don't and like bring it back to visibility yeah. if you don't tell people what you do if you cannot introduce yourself you don't have a business that's you interesting to talk about it that's that's very interesting to think that like women yeah they have these great ideas and they're like oh, yeah I'm gonna set up a business and then they set up the business and then it's like the brakes come on like I wonder I wonder why that is if if obviously you you network you know a lot of women you know a lot of men in business and why is there a difference in the two thought processes I suppose do you have any insight on that yeah there's a there's a huge huge confidence. Um, disparity between where women start in networking where men start and I think this is it was one of the things that when I went out and I started networking in the, the, the female environment I was blown away with the lack of confidence and I was going but hold on a second you've got this business you're it serves a purpose you're solving something for somebody else you should be super proud of that it's awesome and um, a lot of people don't have the um the gumption or the, the courage to go about doing something so be proud of that and talk to people um sometimes they feel that their business is you know i come across women and they don't feel confident speaking to men because they're not used to speaking to men i said well you know part of networking is you know you might be in a female environment and you start introducing yourself to your business but you get more practice at that and more fine-tuned and you do more and more and more that becomes part and parcel of talking to people but also don't think about it as a man think about it. I've got a business that offers a service that solves a problem for somebody then you should be able to talk to anybody about it but it does take practice and it takes that level of confidence and self-belief but this comes back down to what I was saying at the start of the conversation is that networking when you learn to do it it impacts your confidence exponentially and that confidence hits you personally. It, it channels your self-belief. It channels your ability to communicate and connect with people. And that makes you more capable of um, growing your business, of scaling it, of taking people on, of believing you can do more, of channeling your ambition. And that is something I really, really want to see, to see for people. A lot of people also, you know, there's a second strand to it. A lot of people think they want success, but then are afraid of success. They're afraid of going after the success that they think they want. And it's, it's sort of a paradox. They want it, but they don't want it. And that's something, you know, for, for a lot of women in particular, there's a, a real money mindset issue in 
charging people for their service and charging people for what they feel is something they just do well. And there's a lot of money mindset issues for women in particular. And it is real, and that struggle is real. But here's the thing, there's lots of people who can help women who are facing that dilemma. And all businesses, when they're starting, you know, I, I, I would have sort of four, I would always say to people, you should have four core people in your network. So you might go out networking to get sales, but what I would say is network to find mentors. And if you need to learn or upskill or improve something, get mentors. A mentor is somebody who knows more about something than you do, who can help or soundboard or advise. It doesn't have to be a paid role. And sometimes mentors can be a bar, it could be a podcast you're listening to, it could be somebody blog that you subscribe to but find your mentors and if there are people you want to sound bird and build a relationship find those people yeah. second group is coaches and if you've got a money mindset issue engage with a coach and do a six-week program on working on your mindset and being in business you have to mind your mind it's really 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 important that you look after what's going on in your head um but having coaches you know I think a lot of people think, oh, I don't need a business coach. I don't need a, a, a life coach or anything like that. But yet they would look at an elite athlete, elite, uh, you know, an elite athlete. And yeah. it could be Tiger Woods, it could be Rafa Nadal or whatever. Going, these people excel and are where they are because they have coaches and they are the best because they still have coaches. And the why you have a coach is a coach sees things you can't see. And that's the bottom yeah. line. You yeah. can't see you can't see therefore you can't improve it and when you've got a block you probably can't see it and what is holding you back from being successful from managing money from being able to communicate with people you need to have coaches and everybody needs coaches you're not going to need the same coaches you need a coach that can help you with a certain problem at a certain point in your journey and your life and then you um you improve and then you will outgrow them and then you need to find a, a, another coach sorry my phone has started going there and so you need to constantly be looking at that so i would certainly believe you always need to have a coach in your life you need to look at um i would always say to people look to have a connector in your arsenal and in, in your yeah. toolkit so somebody who knows a lot of people that you want to be connected to but you can only know how a connector is going to be of value and help you if you know who you need to be connected to. So I would see a lot of people going into networks and they don't know who their clients are. They don't know who they want to talk to. They just want to talk to anyone. And you go into a network and you say, I'm looking for anyone who wants this service. You will find nobody because you're asking everybody else to do the work for you. So the point about researching who you want to talk to and, you know, within marketing and marketing speak, you know, they don't have an avatar or your, your ICA, your ideal customer avatar. Basically, it's who is your ideal customer? What's that bullseye customer? What does that look like? Who is it? What does that persona look like? And there's there's websites and, and fora that you can go and develop that on. And it takes a bit of thinking. And if you've got different products, it might be different people per product. Definitely, yeah, different but, psychographics and everything. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. But if you don't know who that person is, you can't ask people to help you. So once, but once you have identified that person, then you want to find somebody who knows loads of those people. And that person is called a connector. Or if you're looking to find different types of people, you need to find somebody who is a connector who can start introducing you. So it's a bit like a spider's web. Uh, but the, the fourth person, and I think this is something, when this comes into the strategy side of things, is that um, uh, a lot of people go into networks thinking that if I go into a network and there's 20 people there, they should all become my customers. I'm going, nope. You shouldn't be thinking of any of them as your customers. What you should be doing is getting to know them, getting to know who they know, and then building up a relationship that they feel comfortable enough introducing you into their network. That's the key. You may do business with one of those 20 people in the room over time because you build yeah. up a professional friendship. But if you go in with the expectation that they will feed you business and they are the people you ha who have to give you business, you're going to get disenfranchised very quickly. So your job is to investigate who they know and build up a relationship with them that they feel comfortable that you are a good representation of them to yeah. introduce you to their network. So look at it differently. But the other thing is looking at for customer sources. So who talks to your customers before you talk to your customers? Find the person who talks to your customers before you do. Because within all buying cycles, there's a funnel. There's always sort of a channel of how things happen. And if you think of the domino effect, you know, somebody building a website or SEO, 
I'm an SEO consultant, right? I should actually engage with um, strategic marketeers or website people, whatever. Website people, you might want to talk to videographers and other podcast people, whatever. There's going to be an alliance and a framework and a network of people that you can connect with. But it's finding key customer sources, somebody who could would talk to your customers before you do. And if you start finding a few of these people, you spend your time building the relationship with them, not trying to find all end customers. If you're always trying to find end customers, you're going to burn out pretty quickly because you won't be able to meet enough people quickly enough. What you need to do is identify who could feed in lead to you. Work out who that person is. Now find out where they network and who they are. Yeah. Now start your strategy around building relationships with them. That's a much better use of your time because if you find and have the relationship with that person, they give you five leads in a year or 10 leads in a year, you didn't need to find those 10 people. You'll build up the, those relationships over time, but you're trying to maintain your customer source relationship. So yeah. it's a better use of time, your energy, you know, so that that's just sort of a few, well, it's probably a lot of little, little tips there. Um, yeah. this, this has been extremely insightful, extremely insightful. I think uh, everything that you've said, you've, there's so much value in this. And I think me, myself, I'll listen back to this four, five, six times. It's, uh, it's been a really good conversation uh, we've had. And then once again, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to have a chat with us. Um, no. I think we should wrap it up uh, now. However, just one last time, where if anyone wants to get in touch with you, where's the best place to find you? If you log on to www.networkinggene.ie, you'll find all of the details, the blogs, the social media connects, and you can sign up to my newsletter there. And my email is jean at networkinggene.ie. So I'm Brilliant. always... Or through LinkedIn. Perfect. Through LinkedIn as well. Yeah, Brilliant. Exactly. So, well, thanks very much for uh, coming on to the podcast and oh, hopefully we keep in touch. All right. We will, we will indeed.